So welcome students. In this video, let us look at the introduction of complex numbers. So this chapter complex numbers starts with the introduction of a weird number called i. So now in this video what we are going to do is we are going to see what i is. So now, you know different sets of numbers in your lower classes. You know about the set of natural numbers, the set of whole numbers, the set of integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers and real numbers. So we have seen these six special sets of numbers. And you know that natural numbers is a set of counting numbers starting with one, two, three, so on, up to infinity. And whole numbers adds a zero to the natural number set. So zero, one, two, three, so on is a set of whole numbers. And if you add negative numbers to the set of whole numbers, you get the set of integers, that is so on, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three, so on. This is a set of integers and rational numbers are numbers which can be expressed as a ratio of two numbers p by q. So rational numbers are set of numbers which are of the form p by q such that p comma q both belong to integers and q not equal to zero. <clears throat> so these numbers are called rational numbers and the numbers which are not rational are called irrational numbers, so which cannot be expressed as p by q. So the numbers which cannot be expressed as a ratio of two integers are called irrational numbers and both rational numbers and irrational numbers combinedly form the set of real numbers. So we know all the six sets and what do we know about real numbers? So real numbers has can be related to something called a real number line where each of this real number, each of this real numbers can be represented by points on this real number line. So 0, 1, 2, 3 and this line go on till infinity, minus 1, minus 2 so on. So we know that this line is made up of infinite number of points. So each point on this real number line represents a real number. So if you take any point on this line, it can either be a rational number or an irrational number. So these two combinedly form the set of real numbers. Now, where does I come from? So to understand this, so let us understand numbers as solutions of equations. So what is a number? A number is an object which can be used to measure, count or label something. A number is just an object which can be used to measure or count or label some quantity. And we know that the physical situations that we encounter can be converted into mathematical equations. The physical situations that we encounter can be converted to corresponding mathematical equations. You have been doing this in your lower classes. That's what is called algebra. So physical situations can be converted to mathematical equations right you have done this in word problems in your chapters like linear equations polynomials so on now numbers can be seen as solutions of some sort of equations that is if you have the equation 2x minus 4 is equal to 0 <coughs> that means a number multiplied by 2 and if you subtract 4 from this you want 0 as the answer. 
So what is the number which satisfies this property? What is the number which satisfies this property? So the number is 2x is equal to 4 and x is equal to 2. So you have a natural number 2 which satisfies the situation 2x minus 4 is equal to 0. So this equation has a solution in the set of natural numbers. Now you can have an equation which does not have a solution in natural numbers. You might need a bigger set than natural numbers. For example, if you want to solve 2x plus 4 is equal to 0. You cannot solve this in natural numbers. You cannot have a counting number which satisfies 2x plus 4 is equal to 0. So to get the solution for this, 2x is equal to minus 4 and x is equal to minus 2. You need a negative number which is introduced to you in the set of integers. So this equation, if you know only about natural numbers, you say that this does not have a solution. But this equation will have a solution if we tend to expand our reach of numbers and go for negative numbers also. So this equation has solution in the set of integers. There might be some equations where integers are also not enough. For example, if you have 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. Instead of 2x plus 4 is equal to 0, if you have 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. So what is the solution for this? x is equal to minus 3 by 2. That means you don't have any integer which satisfies this equation, which solves this equation. So to understand the solutions of this type of equations, we need to expand our reach to number systems which are more than integers. So we go for rational numbers as the ratio of numbers. So x is the ratio of two integers. So this is called a rational number. That means 2x plus 3 is equal to 0 have a solution in the set of rational numbers. Now there might be some equations where rational numbers are not enough to represent the solutions. For example, x square minus 2 is equal to 0. So what is the solution for this? So the solution for this is x square is equal to 2. You need a number. You need a number whose square is equal to 2. And you have seen that you cannot express any number. You cannot have any rational number whose square is equal to 2. So this implies x has to be equal to plus or minus root 2. But, and you have proved in your lower classes that root 2 cannot be expressed as p by q. This is not a rational number. That means x square minus 2 is equal to 0 does not have a solution in the set of rational numbers. So we need some more numbers to express the solutions for this equation. That is, you want, if you want to express a quantity whose square is equal to 2, you don't, you don't have a rational number which satisfies that condition. So you need numbers called irrational numbers. Now rational numbers and irrational numbers combinedly are called real numbers. That means most of the solutions that we have done till now has a solution in real numbers. So real numbers is the biggest set out of all this. And real numbers, you can have solutions for all these equations in the set of real numbers. But real numbers are not sufficient as we go on and on in our experiments on numbers. Now if you have an equation x square plus 1 is equal to 0, <clears throat> what is the solution for this equation? So if you write this in another way, this implies x square has to be equal to minus 1. So let's think about this. What is the solution for this equation? Do we have a real number which satisfies this equation? So I want a real number whose square is equal to minus 1. So we know that if you take a real number, it can either be positive or negative. It can be either positive real number or a negative real number. But if you square a real number, so if you square a positive real number, the answer is obviously positive. 
and if you square a negative real number if you multiply a negative real number with itself obviously minus into minus becomes plus so every real number has its square as a positive number it cannot have a negative square of a real number so in real numbers this equation has no solution <clears throat> now can we expand our reach of numbers so that you can have a solution to this equation so Euler has thought about this equation so Leonard Euler is a mathematician who has thought about this equation x square plus 1 is equal to 0 till the time this equation is uh, thought of as an absurd equation so Euler has thought can we expand our reach beyond real numbers so that I can get some solution for this equation x square is equal to minus 1 so what has thought is okay x square is equal to minus 1 does not have a solution in real numbers so what I say is I'll define some number x is equal to square root of minus 1 so I'll define this number and assume that this number is there obviously this is not a real number it's not a real number is an imaginative this is an imaginary number so I'll just try to imagine this and I'll try to call it a number that means I'll try to use it to measure something or label something or count something I'll try to use this as a number and let me see whether this number satisfies our properties of numbers that means addition property multiplication division so on can I apply operations to this number consistently that means I should not get any absurd results if I assume this as a number so what Euler has thought is uh, let me assume that this is a number and let me see if this number consistently can be used with respect to operations and Euler has tried to do this and as we expect he got some problems so let us see what the problems are so once Euler has assumed that square root of minus 1 is a number he thought of giving some notation to square root of minus 1 so he started calling this as i because this i represents some sort of imaginativeness imaginariness so square root of minus 1 is denoted by i or it's also called iota in Greek so once he thought of using this as a number so let us call square root of minus 1 is equal to i and what is the property of i i is some number such that i square is equal to minus 1 so i is some number whose square is equal to minus 1 obviously this is not a real number this is some sort of imaginary number so let us see whether I can use the I can use this number with respect to operations consistently. So one of the problem that Euler has got in using this as a number is with respect to exponential properties. So we know that a b whole power n is equal to a power n into b power n. So till that point of time this is a very standard law of exponents law means that it is valid for all possible numbers now what Euler has seen is if you apply this property to i so let us take a as minus 1 and b as minus 1 let us take a as minus 1 and b as minus 1 so now minus 1 into minus 1 power n is equal to minus 1 power n into minus 1 power n and let us take n is equal to half half means that we are dealing with square root so square root of minus 1 into minus 1 is equal to square root of minus 1 into square root of minus 1 so minus 1 into minus 1 is plus 1 so square root of 1 is 1 is equal to square root of minus 1 if I call it as i 
into square root of minus 1 is i that is equal to i square. So by definition i square is equal to minus 1. So we are able to prove that 1 is equal to minus 1. So Euler was uh, very surprised how this is happening. So if I use i as a number and if I use the properties which are accepted as loss of numbers. So I am getting a weird result 1 is equal to minus 1. So where is the problem? And Euler has tried to use this in many different situations and he has found that this i is working consistently in most of the situations except this situation. So what mathematicians have thought is, so let us try to use i as a number which is square root of minus 1 but let us tweak with this law and say that this law is not valid for all numbers. So let us try to give some conditions on this law. So now mathematicians have thought of giving some conditions to this law and the condition is that so a b whole power n is equal to a power n times b power n is valid only if, only if at least one of the numbers a and b are positive. So a b whole power n is equal to a power n into b power n is valid only if at least one of a or b is positive. And once this condition has been applied, this condition has been imposed on this law. Obviously this cannot be done because here A and B both are negatives and it has been observed that only in this case you are getting some problems. So once you have put a condition on this law, mathematicians have observed that there is no further problems in I being considered as a number. So from then on I has been considered as a number. This is a basic unit of imaginary numbers. And the properties have of i has been studied extensively. So now once we accept i is equal to square root of minus 1 as a number. So let us look at the further properties of this number. Thank you.